What's up everybody? This is Jonathan here from Immortal Engines. Today I'm going to be working on this Predator 3500 generator. Well, the lid is right there. But anyway, I'm going to be doing a few repairs on this generator. I purchased it for about $200 and it doesn't run. So I'm going to be looking into it to see what's actually wrong with it. And I'm going to bring you guys along. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and liking this video for the algorithms. I will really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and diagnose and fix this generator. Let's go. Okay, everybody, so I'm pretty sure you will believe me when I tell you that I attempted to start this generator and it did not even puff once. So we're going to go ahead and do the first thing that I usually like to do so I don't waste my time, which is clean the carburetor. So I got a few tools over here and we're going to be pulling this carburetor. First things first, there's this breather hose on the airbox lid that I'm pretty sure is going to make our lives easier if we just unplug it just like that. That way the lid actually comes off. So here's the lid. I'm gonna put it above the generator. This is the air filter. Definitely seen better days, but hey, you know, can't complain. And then this metal piece here, so it's so that the filter doesn't get sucked in the carburetor. For the carburetor, as usual, it's a 10 millimeter socket. Be fastened by two screws. Sometimes the air box has a third one on the bottom. Actually, I know I called the other one a crankcase breather hose, but it's not. I'm not really sure yet, but I think it's got something to do with that charcoal box over there. So this is the crankcase. It goes behind the box. And yes, this one does have another screw, but it's from behind. So it looks like I'm going to need an extension for it. it is and here's the air box and it's got a little bit of sand inside which is concerning but I want to throw the screws in there put everything on top of the generator so right here we got our carburetor um, we have a gasket here attached to the choke mechanism so we're just gonna pull the entire carburetor assembly and this choke mechanism should just pop out okay Looks very similar to other carburetors I've done. It's probably the same one. So I'm going to bend that breather hose back there. It seems to be getting snagged on something and I already know what it is. It's the, it's the fuel line. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the generator on off so that the fuel is closed. That way it doesn't just leak out. And she's out. No fuel leaking out, which is great. So now we're just gonna continue to pull this guy out. And we're almost there. So I'm gonna leave it dangling there for a second because I wanted to show you guys something. This stepping motor controls the throttle so that you can adjust the speed electronically instead of mechanically. And we have this wire right here that's running. And it's very nice that the people that designed this generator actually left us a plug right here so that we could easily disconnect the carburetor and drop it on the ground just like I did. Isn't that nice? <laughs> well, anyway, she's out. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera up there pointing down and I'm going to show you guys how to clean that carburetor. All right, everybody. So I got the carburetor here on the table. And first things first, we're going to remove the the bolt down here so it's another 10 millimeter screw I'm gonna break it loose and before you actually pull this bowl off keep in mind the orientation of this hose okay yeah, if you look at it from the side it kind of matches that black plug so that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna completely take that off okay Right off the bat, this carpet is not dirty. Yep, I don't think there's gonna be much cleaning required here. But it's good to show you guys anyway. And those hoses are already brittle. 
Come on, guy. Pull out. There we go. So we have our main jet right here. Which uh, actually doesn't seem that dirty. Yep, that flows good. And then this guy right here. I don't even know what this guy is called. I've been cleaning carburetors for like three years. I still don't know what it is. But be very careful. Make sure you have glasses because it will spray in all directions. If it doesn't, then those little holes are clogged and you're going to need a needle. And you're going to have to... Uh, you're going to have to like poke one at a time so I'm actually not liking the surface right there is a little bit dusty so be careful where you leave your parts after you clean them and we have one more jet and this is the jet that's responsible for the low speed uh, on the engine and we have to remove this plastic plug right here so before you pull it just remember how much it's sticking out on either side so that when you put it back together it's exactly the same that this plastic screw right here is actually the stop for the throttle so the throttle doesn't go too far and this right here it's a plug and this is the idle jet or the pilot jet again this is the guy that's responsible for the low speed on the engine. I don't know why it's so difficult to pull today. There we go. So just like that, we pull this guy out. Now be careful because it does have an O-ring to seal it. You don't want to spray brake clean on the O-ring. So be as careful as you can. And I'm gonna attempt. Yeah. Already, I can see that guy um, spraying, so that's a good sign. So again, I'm gonna leave it over there with the rest of the clean ones. And there's so much sand on this generator, I really don't know what they did with it. But before we reinstall it, we're gonna go ahead and clean that hole where it came from. Okay. And we're gonna spray there and there. Again, always being careful with your eyes. Do you see that? That's where it flows. I think this one goes to the bottom. Yep. And last one where the gas goes in. So, you've done all of those. And if you want, you can just spray the, the mouth of the carburetor, I would like to call it. A lot of stuff do stick to it. Uh, when it starts to suck in oil. I'm gonna give you a tip while I put this together. If the carburetor is consuming oil, it may mean that you need a new air filter because that crankcase breather hose is what actually brings the oil into the carburetor when the air is restricted by a dirty air filter. So we're gonna put this back together. Remember I told you guys to remember how this goes? So mine was something like that. Don't have to be crazy exact. So don't go and count the turns, it's not necessary. Next we're gonna install the float and the needle. And I'm gonna show you guys how to check that to see if it actually works. But one thing I'm gonna tell you guys right now is that I did not find a crazy dirty carburetor and that's concerning me a little bit because usually they don't run because the carburetor is so dirty and this carburetor should have ran so there's something else wrong with the generator I do have something in mind but I'll have to reinstall this guy try it again and then move on to the next thing and we're gonna reinstall it on our carburetor it's just the easiest way Okay, I already cleaned the inside of this guy. And we're gonna reinstall the bowl. And I know I told you guys to remember how it went. I don't know if you guys remember, but it goes like that. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the plug and make sure the, 
The seal is still on it. Little gasket. And you're gonna screw it back in there. Next we're gonna snug it up. Pretty tight, but just don't go and use the impact on it. Okay guys, so I placed you down here because we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our freshly clean carburetor. So what we're gonna do first is, let me see, I think this cable went like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide the carburetor in. Okay, just like that. So we're gonna reconnect our fuel line. And excellent, I was able to put that by hand. And when you go and install this guy right here, you wanna push the carburetor out a little bit and you're gonna insert this pin right here into the hole that's on the choke, just the way it came out. So you're just gonna align that best way you can. There you go, I got mine done. And then you slide it all the way back, just like that. And if you see, our little drain screw lines up to where you could reach it with your um, screwdriver. So we're gonna reconnect our stepping motor for the throttle. Good to go. Uh, I wanna reattach that drain hose to where it belongs. This other one doesn't reach for some reason. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reinstall this air box. But you know what? I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna rinse this air box with water. Okay guys, so I wanted you guys to see it firsthand. I removed the panel and did both of those screws. And, whoa. Here, let me bring this to the light. It's literally clogged as hell. You cannot, yeah, you cannot see the other side. That is crazy. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna eliminate this thing because it seems like it's gonna be a recurring problem. It's gonna continue to give issues. It's an emissions thing. So if you don't live in a dry area or if you're not gonna run it on concrete or something like that, it might not be a bad idea to delete that. And now, I bet you guys that when I pull that cord, this generator is gonna start. All right, so I'm gonna put you guys right here. I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna put it on start again. My camera is falling over. So I bet you guys now that when I pull this cord, it's gonna start. So I'm gonna put it on start. I'm gonna give it a good pull. Almost. Okay guys, so it's day number two here. I literally got tired of pulling the pull cord and taking the spark plug out and cleaning it and checking the gap and checking for spark. I tried and tried and tried and I could not get it to start. I got it to like cuff a couple of times, but it never ran. So yesterday after waiting and waiting, I came outside after it was set for three hours, I gave it one pull and it started right up. So I think that I had it flooded. <laughs> I guess you can only blame that on me. So sometimes it's just good to leave them alone for a little bit. Let your frustrations go away and give it another try. So I'm going to go ahead and set the camera down here. And I'm going to give it a few pulls for you guys. It should be good enough. So I'm going to put it on start. Please start. Now, about how it runs though. Hmm, so so. So, here, I'm gonna try one thing. I'm gonna pop the air box in case the air filter is causing that restriction, but I highly doubt it. It's 
just not very happy. And one thing I'm going to tell you guys is that the valve cover is getting hot very, very quickly. I mean, it's warm for now, but I'm sure in two minutes it will be impossible to touch this. So what I think is happening is I think that this generator has an exhaust valve leak. Uh, that could be caused by the valves being way too tight from the factory, hence why this generator never ran well. Here, we got a little bit more light today, and this is what I pulled out of it. This is insane. Look at that. Tons of soot. So, that could be caused by the engine not running properly. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put that back together over there. Thankfully, we don't have to pull the carb. And I'm going to pull the valve cover, but... That is gonna be for another video. I almost did it in this video. I'm gonna make another video. It will be a very short video. How to adjust the valves on the Predator 3500 generator. Uh, and yeah, so if you guys are interested to find out how to adjust the valves, it's very easy, very simple, and it's not very labor, labor intensive like other generators because the valve cover is right there. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, the journey of cleaning the carburetor with me. And again, if you're interested to see how to clean the valve cover, I'll link the video somewhere above or at the end of this one. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. It will help me with the YouTube algorithms. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.